Hello, Steve here. Welcome back. Uh, sorry it's been so long, but we're finally here. Lesson 4. Hope you've all been well. Thanks for all your comments and your likes on my other videos. And uh, what we're going to look at in this lesson is tapping in MathRock. Uh, we'll take a look at some existing examples, and then we'll look at technique, and then I will give you some exercises for you to practice. So, first, uh, tapping in MathRock. So, as you know, already know, it's a well-utilized skill by many bands, bands such as uh, Corvette, Don Cavallaro, Light, Delta Sleep, and many more. And when used um, effectively, you can sound great, and you can make many good parts to songs. So, um, there's two main ways of tapping, I would say. You can either play with uh, outer plectrum, so you can do two-hand tapping. <laughs> like that or you can use the plectrum as well and do the same thing we'll take a look at later in technique of um, using a pick and not using a pick and then we can do playing a uh, holding some kind of chord and then tapping So let's take a look at some examples. First, let's take a look at tapping with both hands. So the example I have here for you is a band called Meet Me in St. Louis. And it's, the song is called um, All We Need Is A Little Bit Of Energy On And A Lot Of Luck, I Do Believe. So it goes like this. tapping with both hands and it's um, a good example of angular melodies which is a key component to math rock and next let's take a look at um, the more holding a chord example so for this one you have um, yeah, every place is a house by maps and atlases very simple but I think it sounds great and the other guitarist is doing um, something up here I don't know I can't remember what it is I never actually learnt it but doing something quicker whilst the other guitarist is playing that and uh, another example would be something you've heard me play quite a lot uh, I guess to my band Mountains Now we've took a look at some uh, examples within the genre itself. Let's take a look at technique. So with technique, let's start with the picking hand. So we can either play with a plectrum or without a plectrum. Um, if you're playing without a plectrum, then arguably it's a bit easier because you're using your stronger fingers, your index and your middle finger. Whereas if we're playing whilst using a plectrum, we're going to be using more our middle and ring finger. And the ring finger is not as uh, strong, well in my case anyway, it's my index finger. And I can't do really anything with my little finger, it's quite useless, a tiny little thing. So, And um, with your fretting hands, so here you want to make sure all your fingers are strong enough to be able to tap. get the right sound there so again your index and middle finger are probably going to be stronger than your uh, your ring and your um, little finger again there so just work on the two try and build some, some strength there and so let's move on to exercises so the exercises I've made for you are um, two different scales we've got major and minor as they're two most utilized um, uh, tones that you're going to hear and um, I've made a, got a lot of notes to work with which is good and they're in a standard tuning as well um, a lot of other bands I know that do tapping I think Corvette play in some kind of uh, yeah, different tuning so it makes it much easier to strum a chord and then do some tapping parts as well but it can easily be achieved in standard tuning as well so these examples here hopefully will get you on your way so uh, first we have uh, major, as you can see here, 
and they, we have root 6th position and root 5th position. So there's four notes per each string and what I recommend you do whilst you learn them is to break them into two parts, so play three notes at a time instead. So let's take our first example in 6th position. What the black notes mean is, is the root note. So if we, let's start on A, so on the 5th fret. And if we play through just the first three notes, like this, and then we can go up again. And three more, three more. So there you have it. And the way you can do that is move up one, and then play the next three. Play up one, and then down the other. So, mess around with that shape uh, and the other one as well. So, you've got a um, Starting in the fifth position there, and then again, so move it down. So breaking it up into this two, these two uh, scales will make it much easier for you to learn. So once you get comfortable with them, then we can start to yeah, mess around with them and come up with some ideas. And the one I played earlier. Hmm. So just, uh, I'd recommend just um, playing around them for you know a, a while and see what you can come up with. That'd be the best way of getting used to them as well. And. Um, so you can either start from every time you know you're moving chords. If you're playing A major, you start with your root there. But if you want every time you move, so if you went to a G major, then same thing again. You know we move that scale with the chord. But what I want to show you is um, a clever little thing we can do. Uh, we can stay in the same place and whilst the chords move behind our piece. Sorry about that, the uh, camera ran out of memory, so I really do need to get a bigger memory card. So back to what I was saying, so uh, what I'll do is I'll give you an example of what I mean with this, this, these chord changes whilst keeping the same shape. So as long as the chords that are going on behind are in a diatonic, meaning in within the same key, then it should give you a different feeling every time. So let's give you an example of this. So I've chosen the key of C major, most simplest key to use, and you can see that no, the first um, note in C major, obviously is C. Second is a, a D minor. Next is the E minor, and then we got the fourth F major, fifth G dominant, sixth. back to your lovely C there. And so, let me give you an example of this. So here I've highlighted the chords in red for you, so you can see which ones I'm using. And underneath you got the progression. So the progression is C major, E minor, F major, E diminished, and then G dominant. And then we'll resolve back to the C. So as each chord changes, listen um, how the feeling changes. It changes from major to minor to diminished, hopefully. So just get my recorded example here.
so there's that example. Um, I hope you can hear what I'm getting at there. So as each chord changed, it had quite a different tonality, but I was still playing the same thing. Uh, this is essentially how modes work, and you may have noticed underneath that I've written these uh, strange words if you've never heard of them before. Uh, Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Mixolydian Aeolian, and Locrian. And um, modes are maybe something that you come across before. They're not as uh, confusing as most people make them out to be. Just as long as you are playing um, the corresponding uh, scale, and changing the chords underneath, then you're going to get that tonality. Essentially, that's how they work. And um, I won't go into too much detail about them. I'll leave them for a later lesson where we'll take a look at modes in more detail. So uh, let's move on to the minor positions again. So here, again, like with the major ones, what I want you to do to learn them is to separate them into two parts. So let's start on the A again, so that'll be our root. And then we can move up. And the same thing again. And um, again, if you want to, as each time you play a minor chord, you can move the shape along with it. major variations just mess around with what you feel feels natural and come up with something that works for you and you can change each time each time the uh, chord changes do the same as with the major example I gave you, we're changing the chords behind, uh, but this time with the minor, whatever root note that you start on, if you try to do this, it's always going to be the sixth note within that key. Like for example, take C major, if you count what's the sixth note, so there you got is an A, A minor. So again, if you play like C major, D minor, E minor, F major, then you're going to get a different tonality each time you're playing over them chords. And so, essentially what I've given you here is uh, the, the four different shapes of modes, basically. So your major shapes here are the Aeonian and the Dorian modes stuck together. And your minor ones here are Aeolian and Locrian scales stuck together. And... Um, the modes themselves is just the same notes repeated over and over again. So essentially you've just got one gigantic major scale. So it's when you apply the um, different tonalities of the harmony behind it is really when you get to notice how the modes sound different. So it really relies on the harmony more than the melody. But within each mode there are certain notes that colour that mode, that are the characteristics of that mode, so you do need to pay attention to them. Anyway, uh, talking too much about them again anyway, so just essentially just uh, what I would recommend, just keep practicing through these shapes and be comfortable, see what you come up with, and I'd like to see what you come up with actually, so if you make any videos or anything like that, so please post a link and um, if you're unsure about anything I've gone on about here today, I tried to cover quite a lot, so I hope it's not been too confusing or you've been left in the dark about certain things. But um, yeah, please feel free to leave any comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. 
I think I've covered everything and um, good luck with whatever you come up with and please leave some suggestions for the next video as well. And until then, so please like and subscribe and thank you for watching. Bye bye.